G'day. We're going to have a look into this new Asus Tough Gaming A14. It's a 14 inch portable gaming laptop. Now, you probably know I've added the word portable because I've been very impressed by its weight and the ability, its performance for gaming. Now, this houses the new AMD mobile processor and i know there's a bit of controversy about the actual naming system of amd's new mobile processor they've added that ryzen ai i know it's the buzzword of 2024 i'm not a fan of it as well but the rest of it i'm fine with which is the hx370 keeps the standard and it's easier numbers to work with so i've actually made peace with the numbers and the new gaming system for amd so let's just get past with it but as for the performance wise I know there has been quite a lot of reviews on this new processor and I've seen a few and that was after I've actually tested this out and my own testing I have been very very impressed by the actual AMD Ryzen AI processor it is sweet not only is it sweet it is a crazy performance and you'll see it through my own testing on how it is later on now alongside this there has been a recent release of a new game called Wukong, which really tests a lot of computers out there. It is an amazing game, and I've been playing on this A14, and I have been very impressed by this performance on it. I can just give you a quick spoiler. The actual gaming experience on this A14 is better than my desktop computer, and that's actually a Ryzen 16 inch cores with an RTX 3090. Yeah, I'm using a 30 series GeForce. I haven't moved to a 40 series, I just don't have a need to. And even this laptop beats that. So I have been really enjoying this. And again, portability. Whew. Now, as always, I will be putting, putting timestamps along the video so you can skip the different section that you may be interested in time. Let's start off the specs. As for process wise, as I mentioned before, is the new AMD Ryzen AI 9. HX370 processor. And then with the memory wise, it has a maximum capacity of 32 gigs. Now normally you see is 16 gigs and these are sold to the system board. So make sure you get the correct amount as you can't upgrade later on. As for storage wise, it has one slot of M.2, which is a 2280 format. As for the graphics, it has the integrated graphics, which has been upgraded to RDNA 3, which is the Radon 890M. And it also has discrete graphics. There are two options, which is the GeForce RTX 4050 or the RTX 4060. The display is a 14 inch 2.5K resolution display which has an aspect ratio of 16 by 10 and it is an IPS display. Now it does have a matte finish to it which is an anti-glare display which means you don't get much reflection when you're outdoors and I definitely had no issues working on consuming multimeter and working on documents outdoors now it does have a refresh rate of 165 hertz so it is a quick display and great for those who are doing first person shooters measuring the color gamma coverage of the 2.5k ips display it resulted with 93.9 percent srgb coverage 67.3 percent Adobe RGB coverage and 70.9% DCI P3 coverage. Looking at the ports, looking at the left hand side, we have the power port. Now, this is for the power adapter. We have a full size HMI port. This is version 2.1. And then a USB 4 port. Now, this is a USB Type C and it does support display port and also power delivery. So, you can actually charge the laptop using this port. But of course, it won't deliver the full 200 watts, as that is limited to 100 watts. And then we have the USB Type A port, that's USB 3.2 Gen 2. We have an audio combo jack. And looking around the back, we have no ports at the back, but it's just the exhaust vents. And then looking on the right hand side here, we have a USB Type A port, again, 3.2 Gen 2. We have a USB type C port. Now this is again, USB 3.2 Gen 2. It does support display. And then we've got the micro SD card slot. Examining the performance for long duration tasks for this tough A14. This one's configured with the AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX370 processor. It has a base clock speed reported at two gigahertz. So we do want to see this above two gigahertz. 
and I've pretty much got a 100% load on all the system resources. So that's the processor, memory, storage, and also the discrete graphics that's also on 100% load. And I can see that the speed of the process is averaging anywhere between 3.4 to about 3.8 gigahertz now that is way above the base clock speed i'm very impressed by this already and this is an average so we're going to examine this a little bit more now this long duration task is going going for about nearly four and a half hours so this is pretty really amazing is all i can say by it now having a look at the cores here we can see the cores is anywhere between 74 to about 95 degrees Celsius. Most time it's, it is sitting around about 74 to about 85 degrees Celsius. You'll start to see this bang up again very soon. But it is mostly sitting at around about the 70 range. It is good. And we can see that from the actual clock speed, you're seeing the actual first four cores that do run at around about four to about 4.8 gigahertz that is blazing fast and this is for a long duration task and then you can see the rest of the cores they're around about anywhere between three to about 3.5 gigahertz there again very very fast there i am very impressed and we've also got the graphics on load which is attributing to more heat and this tough a14 is able to handle this heat in turbo mode I am very impressed by the actual performance in this, and this also attributes to AMD's new processor. It is fantastic. Wow. Really wow. Looking at temperatures and fan noise, when I took my measurement, the ambient temperature room was 24 degrees Celsius, and the ambient room noise measured in at 35 decibels. And just to give you a reference point, my hand was anywhere between 36 to 37 degrees Celsius at this room temperature. So I took my base measurement when the computer was idle and the hottest air around the keyboard measured a maximum of 37 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, you barely heard it and it measured in at 35 decibels. And the average internal core temperatures was 36 degrees Celsius. Then I put 20% load on the computer, that's pretty much average use. That's tasks like office productivity work, surfing web, streaming video, and the hottest air around the keyboard measured a maximum of 40 degrees Celsius. Again, it stayed dead silent at 35 decibels, and the average internal core temperature was 47 degrees Celsius. Then I put 50% load on the computer, and the hottest air around the keyboard measured a maximum of 48 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan, it spun all the way up to a maximum of 43 decibels. And the average internal core temperature was 64 degrees Celsius. Then I put 100% load on the computer and the hottest air around the keyboard measured a maximum of 52 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it stayed at a maximum at 43 decibels. And the average internal core temperature was 77 degrees Celsius. While I had 100% load on the computer, I put the computer in turbo mode in the Asus Armor Crate to allow it at its maximum potential. And the hottest air around the keyboard made a maximum of 50 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it spun all up to a maximum of 50 decibels. And the average internal core temperature was 84 degrees Celsius. I also measured the bottom back cover while I had it in turbo mode with 100% load and the hottest air around the back cover measured a maximum of 49 degrees Celsius and of course it stayed at a maximum of 50 decibels. Interesting enough, most of the heat is located near the 8 key and that's not really an area you normally touch or put your fingers around. So all the area where you actually do type, you actually don't feel much of the heat at all. You actually feel this laptop is actually running quite cool but definitely do not put this computer on your lap while it's in gaming mode as you still do definitely feel the heat from the bottom. The A14 comes with a 73 watt hour battery and I managed to get 9 hours and 4 minutes for the modern office battery life test in PC Mark 10, 1 hour and 51 minutes for gaming and 11 hours and 25 minutes for video playback on the Procom battery life test. The weight of the tough A14 is 1.45 kilos plus the 200 watt power adapter becomes a combined weight of 2.03 kilos you might be carrying around with you. There are two speakers located on the bottom front on either side of the laptop. And when I tested the maximum volume of speakers, it managed to measure at a peak of 78.7 decibels. Now I actually consider this on the quiet end of the scale compared to other laptops. So 
this is probably one of the places I'll probably can like to see some improvements. As for the sound quality, we got quite a bit of nice low end bass. We do have very strong mids and it is balanced to the mids. We've got lots of reverb and nice acoustics. Overall, very good clarity. They are decent sounding speakers for a two speaker system. It's just a little bit quiet on the volume. As for the keyboard, these are surprisingly quiet sounding keys for a gaming computer. We've got good key travel. We've got a very smooth surface for each individual key and we've got nice spacing in between. And these are considered a medium size key keys the keys are white colored backlit and there are four settings to it off low medium and high and as for the trackpad this is a nice size trackpad especially for a size of 14 inch it is mechanical so it's hinged at the top and you can depress it as you move down they have very silky smooth glass like surface to it and it is multi gesture and i didn't have any issues registering any of my touches and even light touches or moist fingers. This is a recording from the 1080p webcam from the Tough A14. This is the video and audio unedited. You can hear and see what the quality webcam is like. Now, as always for this test, I've got two types of lights currently turned on. I've got my one studio light turned on and also the down lights in this room turned on for ambience. Now I'll turn off my one studio light off and you'll see this adjust. Now the two down lights in front of me is a bit far away and one is actually half blocking. So there's actually not much light hitting on my face. This is what I consider a dark environment. If you're in an office environment, you should have much more light than one I'm currently at. Now I'm gonna turn the one studio light back on and of course, Better quality light should give you better quality picture. Now I am finding this is taking a bit of time to adjust for the difference of exposures as this is just now just finally gained its way through. And this is it. Now there is also, as this processor does has MPU, which means it can actually do all these. I'm just gonna turn on the studio effects on here. You can see this is now working very well. So, and is that it is really quick with the MPU to actually taking care of this. So it's got that, there are two buds word there. As for the build construction of the Tough Gaming A14, it is made entirely of aluminum. So we've got aluminum on the bottom, we've got aluminum on the back top cover, and also on the palm rest. It all feels the exact same here, which means this thing is tough and it feels great. Just doing the big bend test, you can see. It can definitely stand that up, no problems at all. And I'll just do the good old, see how the keyboard fakes. It's actually very quite strong here there. So I can hear that as I'm pressing, I can hear I'm touching the fan a little bit, but not. That's pretty good, and you would never normally do what I just did now. So definitely great. Now just have a look at the hinge wires. We're gonna do the one finger test I always do. So one finger, let's see how it goes. And that is nice and very, very consistent and smooth all the way. And it does oh, nice 180 degrees. So it's fantastic there. Now as always, I'm gonna do my good old wiggle test for this. And there is a little bit of letting go a little bit. So it doesn't really fully stay clamped. It does let, up smudgily there uh, let goes a little bit on that one side and again same it does let go a little bit so maybe it's something we can work on just giving a little bit but it, it is very smooth on clamping again that's just nick picking a fantastic laptop here here's the results for the benchmarks performed on the tough a14 here's the results for passmark city bench 2024 pc mark 3d mark cross mark Crystal Disc Mark, Geekbench 6, Geekbench ML, Procon Office, Procon Machine Learning, Procon Photo Edit, Procon Video Edit, Puget Photoshop, Puget Lightroom, Puget Premiere Pro, Puget DaVinci Resolve, Luxmark, Octane Bench, Eugene Engine, Spec View Pref 2020, and some gaming benchmarks like Far Cry 6, Assassin Creed Valhalla, Bronzer 5 F1 2023 Cyberpunk 2077 and Wukun Black Myth This Asus Tough Gaming A14 is so impressive. I've used this word so many times, I'm still going to use it because it is impressive. 
it's not just the performance it's how it delivers the performance for this gaming or and otherwise for other normal workloads and even high workloads stuff this thing is just impressive of it it is not only high performance, it's how it delivers, it just runs very cool. I can even touch this even on 100% low, this thing is on. And it's not really that loud when it's just able to expel that heat and just be done with it. Now I'm running Wukong at the moment, which is one of the latest games and it is very intensive. My desktop computer was struggling with it and it's a powerful computer and I had to optimize to be, make it playable. Now this tough A14 here, it's in cinematic mode and I don't have to even optimize it and it is very smooth to play with even a higher settings that is possible there. I can't wait until I actually optimize it to see how it runs but I really don't need to. And I run this mostly on battery power in performance mode, not even in turbo mode. Now at the moment I am running this in solo mode and you can see it is so smooth at all. It is just crazy how smooth it is and just how it delivers and it's just so compact and portable here I'm just now we've got great selection of ports we've got a good keyboard and trackpad and it's got a great build for it we've got a decent webcam here and a nice display which really don't really see that much reflection from it nice definitely fast enough we've got the 165 Hertz which is great for of FPS I'm not an FPS gamer but it is for those who can cater for that and the speakers, it does sound decent. The only thing about it is I just wish it had a little bit more volume and it, that's my only probably con out of this computer here. But else, oof, what a great package. This might have been my favorite computer of 2024. The ones are right up there at the moment. Now, I really want to get back to gaming Wukong. So definitely hope you've enjoyed the video. Informative, you enjoyed it. If you did, even support my channel. Smash that like button for me. Share this video. It does help me out. And as always, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. And I'll see you next video. I'm going back to gaming. See ya.